Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jason Fox. I'm the uh, Senior Technical Evangelist at the Fireware Foundation. And in short, the subject of today's uh, uh, webinar is how to do things better. Um, as you uh, are no doubt uh, aware, there have been uh, an expansion in the number of uh, iHubs within the uh, Fireware network. And uh, for example, we now have uh, agricultural based uh, iHubs all the way from Athens through to uh, uh, the Azores, but they are uh, um, at different levels of uh, maturity. There might be some which, uh, if you've been watch watching the other uh, iHubs videos, who have got uh, um, deep knowledge in, uh, uh, in uh, agriculture, others who are just starting out. And the uh, question we have here is how to, how to recognise what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and how to do it better. So today I'm, I'm joined by two colleagues in the uh, Smart AgriHubs uh, project, uh, I'm Anissa of the uh, University of Almeria and uh, uh, Gabor Karali of AKI to tell you how to do things right. Over to you, Ahmed. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you for, for hosting us today. Um, and welcome to everybody to our um, third webinar. So um, basically a collaboration between Smart Agri Hubs and Fireware. So today, um, as Jason has mentioned, we will focus on competence centers and the good practices, what, how can you be better? Um, so at the beginning, we will remind you of what competence centers mean in, in the context of smart agri hubs and the context of digital innovation hubs. And then uh, my colleague, uh, will, uh, Gabo, will introduce the uh, competence centers uh, toolkit that we have been uh, developing uh, in this project. And then I will uh, introduce some of the good practices that we have um, from the network. So a quick reminder um, for us as a, um, at uh, the smart agri hubs, the digital innovation hubs um, are what we call support organizations or support ecosystems at a regional level that aim to make businesses more competitive by speeding up the development and uptake of digital innovation. And they provide services close to the end users, what we call at a working distance, and thereby cater to the needs of agriculture producers and food processors in a specific region. Structurally, digital innovation hubs maintain working relationships, as you can see from this figure, with a number of different actors to form a one-stop shop where companies, especially SMEs, Startups and mid-caps can get access to technology testing, financing advice, market intelligence, and networking opportunities. Um, and they do uh, this through a mix of services. And technology services is covered by, by what we call competence centers. Those competence centers can be either inside or outside the region to provide the knowledge, technology, infrastructure, and facilities that underpin the technological transformation. Um, competence centers form what we call the cornerstone of digital innovation hubs in Smart Agri Hubs Network. They provide the digital technological um, uh, infrastructure of the digital innovation hub by offering advanced technical expertise, access to the latest knowledge and information on digital technologies, as well as testing facilities such as labs, pilots, and experimental facilities. Within their respective digital innovation hubs, competence centers cooperate with all relevant partners in the agri-food innovation value chain to support farmers, businesses, especially startups and SMEs, and other agri-food um, uh, through their digital transformation. This entails establishing connections with a wide range of technology companies, research institutions, and digital solution providers, as well as potential users and customers. Within uh, Smart Agri Hubs, a uh, dynamic competence center catalog of digital technologies will be available on our innovation portal with useful digital technology classifications and search functions. And through providing the test infrastructure and know-how for digital innovation, as well as closely cooperating with the digital innovation experiments, 
the network of competence centers will help facilitate digital solutions for the agri-food sector and form an integral part of the greater smart agri-health innovation ecosystem. So how are we going to help the competence centers who are going to join or how, who are already part of our network? Um, that's why we have developed something we call toolkit. And my uh, colleague, Gabo, will introduce this toolkit for competence centers to you. Uh, thank you, Ahmad, indeed. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, very good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's my pleasure uh, to be here in this webinar and I, I can have a chance to talk about uh, this toolkit we have been working on. Uh, so in the next, five, next few minutes, uh, I'm going to talk about what to expect from Smart Agrihubs uh, when it comes to um, sort of supporting materials or supporting uh, services uh, uh, dedicated for uh, competence uh, centers. And uh, more uh, precisely, uh, just as uh, Ahmed mentioned, uh, I'm about to introduce the demonstration toolkit uh, for uh, competence uh, centers. Um, uh, next slide, please, uh, Ahmed. So, uh, as we just heard from Ahmed's uh, introduction, uh, the very general objective of, of uh, Smart RB Hubs uh, is to boost up the, pro the, the process of digitalization in European agriculture by linking uh, key actors uh, like innovation hubs and competence centers and other stakeholders into one uh, extensive uh, network. And uh, we believe, and I guess we share this uh, opinion, that it's a good thing to be part of a network, but what it's even better if uh, our partners in this uh, network can see us. So it's very important that our partners can see what we do, what uh, competencies uh, we have, and, uh, and other things, because this is how uh, collaboration is supposed to work, and this is how the collaboration is uh, supposed to uh, produce uh, uh, great uh, results. So this is why we uh, decided uh, as our part of uh, in this uh, project to work on the materials that aim to show uh, competence centers how to be an active, visible and receptive part of uh, smart agri-hubs. And uh, uh, to be honest, we have said this so many times that eventually it has become our motto as well. Uh, but uh, you might be asking that, okay, but how to how to do that? So the the answer is on the next slide, please. So the short answer to that question is that the competence centers need to uh, demonstrate themselves. And uh, when the demonstration is the keyword here, then other many other keywords came uh, uh, to our mind when we were working on a, on a, on a de definition of uh, demonstration. So what is it? Is it promoting or, or marketing a product or a service that we want to make money of it? Or is it uh, illustration, uh, illustrating how a certain technology uh, works? Or, uh, but then it's all about communication uh, because we want to deliver a message uh, to our partners, to our uh, clients, and uh, not speaking of so many uh, online and offline ways of communication that are uh, existing today and available uh, for us. So um, we eventually, uh, next slide please. So eventually we created uh, uh, this definition by merging all these uh, keywords so in smart agri hubs, a demonstration is the management process uh, responsible for explaining, displaying, illustrating, and experimenting, something that potential partners may want to work on collaboratively or potential clients may want to use. And uh, the, this, this was the point, and, and then I uh, ask Ahmed to switch to my next slide, please. So this was the point where things became a bit complicated and challenging uh, for us. And uh, complicated and challenging because uh, when we started to study the potential demonstration activities, 
then we realize that we are facing a highly complex and uh, diverse world. And uh, to illustrate this diversity and complexity, we brought here this gigantic uh, graph uh, that presents the current landscape of uh, marketing technology solutions uh, out there with more than 8,000 uh, solutions that cover categories such as adver advertising, promotion, data sales and management, etc. So it's a huge world and it's very diverse and complicated. And beside that, uh, when we started using the good old Google uh, to find out more and uh, about uh, demonstration activities, we often ended up with uh, sort of findings that uh, collect the 10 best of something or the 20 most successful of uh, something kind of uh, collections. And uh, we realized that this, this world is so complicated and so diverse. It, from some perspective, it looks like a, a complete mess. So we decided uh, that we will filter this huge amount of information and put it into a solid package and, and, and give it to uh, the competent centers. And uh, hopefully it can help them to take the first step on their way uh, to become a, a better uh, demonstrator. Um, so, but again, the question and how and uh, we do that and uh, the next slide will uh, tell us so we came up with the idea of uh, a toolkit a toolkit that includes uh, five uh, tools and each tool uh, has a specific objective and, uh, and specific function so i will do now a, a quick overview of uh, these uh, objectives and, uh, and functions so the first tool as an entry point uh, uh, the self-evaluation tool will help competence centers to see what skills and what, what competences they, they need to improve in order to become a better uh, demonstrator. Uh, the quick demo decision tool uh, is a decision support system that requires inputs on uh, competence centers, needs, targets, and, uh, and many other aspects of their, uh, of their life. And as an output, uh, this tool will uh, recommend uh, uh, concrete uh, demonstration activities. Uh, the demonstration guideline is, uh, is a repository of uh, sort of uh, good to know uh, knowledge, like hints and uh, tips, pros and cons about demonstration activities presented in, a, in an online interactive uh, form. Uh, the tool that we named the Prepare for Success uh, with this tool, uh, our aim is to capture and demonstrate real life success stories from CCs who have done or achieved something remarkable uh, with their uh, demonstration activities. And last but not least, uh, the how to uh, tool. Uh, so this tool will react to the fact that uh, most of the internet traffic today is online videos. We are very much obsessed with, uh, with the online videos. And within online videos, there is a, a tremendous expansion of uh, tutorial uh, videos. So this tool will review uh, these the so-called how-to videos and present them uh, to uh, the Smart Agri Hub uh, community uh, members. So uh, on the next slide, uh, please. So as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, this is uh, still a so this is still a concept we have been working on uh, for for quite a long time, and uh, we are we still need some time uh, to make it available on our portal. Um, but until then, uh, we would like to present a fictional uh, journey of a fictional competence centers uh, from uh, tool uh, to tool. So on the next slide, I will introduce you to our fictional competence center which is uh, it's based on in Hungary and uh, it's an agri-tech startup engaged in uh, field sensors uh, with uh, smart applications so and this uh, competence center has just registered on the portal um, completed uh, the uh, agriculture technology navigator and now uh, this uh, CC has just started to use uh, our toolkit so on the next uh, slide 
uh, we will see uh, the SAP evaluation tool in practice. So this competence center has just answered all these questions and, uh, and then they received uh, their scores and their results and some recommendations uh, how to uh, proceed. Um, so on the next slide, we will see it in, a, in, in an enlarged, yes. So it's some recommendations uh, regarding what direction they need to go in order to 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 be, to become a better uh, demonstrator. So on the next slide, we will proceed to the quick demo decision tool. And as I mentioned, this will be uh, a decision support uh, uh, system. And uh, the tool will ask questions about our competence centers' uh, needs, uh, targets, and uh, and the time scale and many other aspects uh, that this tool will uh, consider and calculate uh, uh, an answer or an output, which is in this case uh, the recommendation that uh, this CC uh, uh, needs to manage uh, their uh, social media presence. So, okay, but how to do that? And on the next uh, slide, we will see uh, how the demonstration guideline uh, will look like. Um, so the demonstration guideline uh, will provide a diverse uh, pool of uh, referenced, sort of good to know information on uh, demonstration activities. So in this case, we will we see some pros and cons on, on the social media uh, things and some tips and hints. And on the next slide, uh, we'll uh, see some uh, other sources from uh, from accurate uh, sources. In this case, uh, from Facebook for Business and uh, from Twitter for uh, for Business. Uh, so this is all very nice, but uh, as we'll see on the next slide, um, let's imagine that our competence centers become interested in uh, what other competence centers are doing. And uh, or they just simply need some inspiration uh, to start this uh, this journey. So they hopefully will end up uh, using our next tool, which is uh, a collection of uh, success uh, stories or a collection of inspirational uh, stories. So in this case, there would be uh, an example of uh, a Twitter account, uh, which is a quite active feature account so we would emphasize the, the need of uh, being active when we we have a twitter account or another story which is indeed not uh, from uh, the world of uh, agro uh, digitalization but from the world of football but it carries a very strong uh, message uh, uh, to us uh, it's about a professionalist whose uh, international career uh, started with one single tweet and uh, we would advise our uh, competence center to read this story and uh, and uh, and get some inspiration uh, from that and uh, by this point uh, on the next slide um, uh, we hope that uh, um, our competence centers uh, have decided that this all these newly gained knowledge and uh, the whole, the inspirations are ready to be translated into uh, uh, action. Um, so in this case, our competence centers would be strongly advised to visit our next tool, uh, which is a collection of how to uh, videos. And uh, on the next slide, we will see that uh, in this case, we would uh, collect some uh, links uh, to uh, collection of videos from from official uh, formal uh, sources, but obviously there would be other um, uh, videos from uh, from less uh, formal uh, sources. And uh, I think there is the second journey I can uh, show you. And so on the next slide, uh, uh, yes. Uh, so in this case, the decision tool uh, would result in another uh, recommendation. So in this case, our competence centers want to do uh, an offline demonstration and uh, and want to meet uh, uh, their, their end users and they have some time to, to prepare for that. So in this case, um, we would recommend uh, them to organize or attend farm demonstrations. 
And on the next slide, uh, you we will see the demonstration guideline again um, and some information uh, uh, about farm demonstrations. And uh, we would provide a direct link to another Horizon 2020 project, which has much, many, many more uh, things to say about uh, farm demonstrations and have some direct uh, 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 link to, to the network of demonstration farms in uh, Europe. So this is the this is the end of our uh, journey, and uh, I hope that uh, we managed to show or demonstrate uh, what uh, we are working on and what will be will be available for all smart agrihubs community members on the portal very soon. Uh, so if not, uh, I will be more than happy to answer your questions or take your comments. Uh, but. Uh, um, now it's time to 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 hand it over back to Ahmad and and then listen to to the presentation on good practices. Thank you very much, Gabor, for for this. Um, so after we talked about the toolkit for competence centers in smart agri hubs, we would like to share with you some of the good practices that we have been collecting over the past year from existing members of the. Um, smart agri uh, competence center network. But I will start first with understanding what we mean by good practice. In the context of competence centers network within smart agri hubs, a good practice can be defined as a process, a method, a technique, or activity that is fair and replicable which has proved to work well and can succeed in achieving its objective. Therefore, it can be recommended as a model for other CCs even in the network to adapt. The goal of identifying good practices within the network and sharing them with the other members of the network is to encourage the adoption of practices and applying knowledge and experiences in other regions. Of course, costs and implementation types may differ from one competence center to the other within the uh, network, depending on the existing conditions and resources. Yet those conditions can be shared as well, and it may be possible that a um, competence center within the network faces similar challenges and conditions. A good practice, however, should not be seen as prescriptive. So basically, the adopter of the good practice can adapt it to meet its needs and challenges, which allow the good practice to evolve as well. So basically, it's not just about sharing them, but then after adopting them and implementing them, we would like also to know about how good it was, what are the challenges, what are the barriers, facing the competence centers while adopting those. So within um, our uh, project, what we have been doing, we did develop a model, we call it a framework, that summarizes the important areas or the important concepts within the competence center that can be covered by different various good practices. As you can see from this figure, the, the develop model, which includes uh, three main components. We have the external environment, competence center core, and output or impact. And this was inspired by something called the open systems theory. Uh, this theory says that the organizations are social systems that create outputs depending on their environment, which provides various inputs such as key resources that sustain the organization and lead to change and survival. So what we have looked at, we looked at the competence centers as organizations that constantly interact with the environment. And each of the model components cover one of the elements here. So the environment that influences the core, which is the transformation part, and creates output or creates impact. 
So let's start with the first one, with, uh, with the external environment. In the external environment, we have two main components, the customers, our clients, and the national and regional policies. So for the customers, we have identified from discussing with different competence centers within the network, good practices. So communication channel diversification. So the idea behind this was that attracting end users in the agri-food sector is a very complex and complicated task. So for example, one competence center told us that they use different types of communication channels depending on, on the segment of their end user. So for instance, they have set up a social media page on Facebook to engage with younger farmers and demonstrate through different types of content on that page their technologies or their solutions and services. In, the, in that case, this proved to be a very successful approach that generated interest in the services and in the technologies that this competence center provides and led to very valuable interactions with the farmers. On the other hand, when they were trying to approach older farmers, the most successful recruitment they either attending agri-food events or exhibitions in the region, but more importantly, the word of mouth. They told us that farmers are more likely to work with the competence center, or IHOP in this case, in your case, if their neighbor or one of their network members is working with the competence center already, and they have good experience. So not one communication channel is correct. It depends on your end user. The second one is the knowledge transfer office. Some of the competence centers told us that in order to attract and engage with companies, SMEs especially, knowledge transfer office that they have created, sometimes they call it innovation strategy office, um, it was tasked with connecting the people, the researchers or the technology developers within the competence center with the industry and end user. And this office task was to map internally the competences within the competence center departments, so different areas that they are covering, um, and identifies the challenges from the industry or from the end user point of view. So the internal and external mapping and the matchmaking. And in this way, they offer matchmake a brokerage between the technical solutions and the competences within the competence center, plus the challenges and the comp uh, coming from the companies and end users. In one particular uh, example, such an office helped to organize competitions within the competence center. So different teams were formed across different departments in order to come with new types of innovations and technical solutions for identified industrial challenges within the agri-food sector. This competition was actually very successful because it created external interest from potential investors and banks as well. So it was not just targeted uh, towards the end users or the industry, but also uh, many financial institutions were invited in order to participate and observe such teams and work between the competence center teams and the industry. Um, and then that relationship evolved over the years. And then the financial institutions themselves started to ask how they can support such events and how they can participate either with funding or with supporting the winning teams and so on. So these are just two examples from, from this part, the customers. If we move to the policy, um, we have two main points that we have identified as good practices. So 
Policies and regulations that affect the competence centers and indirectly their services can be divided into two broad categories, research and innovation policy and data privacy policies. In many cases, what we have found that the competence centers play what we call an advocate role. Basically, they, uh, they told us that they play this role between the technical SMEs in their region and the Ministry of Agriculture in order to identify the SME's needs from the policy point of view. So, for example, uh, the data availability or the privacy policies, this, an example would be that those technical SMEs needed access to open data sets. Uh, and those open data by the Ministry of Agriculture. So the competence centers were advocating for the ministry to open those data sets and made them available to the SMEs in their region, which in turn created many new opportunities and many new uh, products and solutions using these data. So if we move to the next part of our framework, which is the, uh, the competence centers core, the main part here is called competences and capabilities within the competence center. And these competences and capabilities are basically divided into three areas. The staff within the competence center, the processes of the competence center, and the infrastructure and center. So we'll start with the staff. <coughs> Sorry. Four main areas were identified uh, as uh, good practices that we have collected within the, um, the Smart AgriHubs Competence Centers Network. So first one was training needs and programs. So many interviewed competence centers they have highlighted that the training needs of their staff are usually related to the industry needs. And instead of having a formal training program for their staff, they encourage the on-job on the job training. And they discuss each staff member's training needs on a regular basis. Um, some of them, they say that they team with external experts to train their staff if the competences are missing from the team. Such training can either take the form of workshops or online webinars. Um, and sometimes the, the actual lack of competences encourages the competence centers to acquire uh, new talent or new staff either through phd programs or something like this if the competence center itself is either a university or, or a research organization another good practice that we have uh, looked at is the reward system within the competence centers so basically to move from traditional individual reward system to a team-based one. Of course, this will only work if it fits within a broader context of focusing on the team and the organizational culture. So the primary concept of reward within the, such an agile culture is that the team shares the success or failure of the task they are carrying out. And in this way, promotes the collaboration between the team members and encourages them to help each other out. And this, basically, um, in this regard, the trust within the team would be built when individual team members come together to share information and collaborate. Um, 
Of course, uh, it's important to highlight that some team members can and will align with such culture and reward system faster than others. And this would, should be taken into account when implementing such reward systems. Um, of course, some of the members would contribute more than others. And this should also be acknowledged by the team management. Another competence center told us that they were uh, coupling the team reward system with a mentoring program for new employees which has led to increased productivity and efficiency while carrying projects. For the process part, um, we have identified areas. One of them was the adoption of user-led innovation. So we then the innovative innovation process within the competence center, users can be sources of ideas, products, and services as, as they are able to assess their problems and needs within the competence center. So one competence center suggested to adopt a living lab methodology, where stakeholder private people partnerships, you have SMEs, you have universities and uh, users, sometimes you have public agencies, and all of them, they collaborate, prototype, validate, and test new solutions or new technologies, or sometimes uh, services, in what we call a real life context. Um, several interviewed CCs also highlighted uh, different types of procedures and processes that can be uh, can be shared as good practices. So for instance, um, we have demonstrators, pilots, um, intellectual property rights. So for example, um, a good practice is to allow a partner, uh, we call them problem owner, to set the agenda of demonstrators and methods developed by the CC to solve real business problems. Um, for example, from the IPR point of view, introduction of IPR strategies at the CC has a positive consequences and benefits for all stakeholders involved. For example, one competence center highlighted that beside the unique expertise and infrastructure, Dealing professionally with the IP uh, attracts companies and ensures long-term project cooperation with the competence center. For the infrastructure part, also we have identified those areas. So what we have found that many of the good competence centers, they provide infrastructure as a service for their customers. Um, they said that they have different funding for, for, those, um, for, for those equipment or infrastructure. However, mainly it's coming from public funding. Um, what they have found that they can't only share this infrastructure with the SMEs or companies within the region, but also with other competence centers and institutes uh, through mutual agreements, which have allowed them to offer greater value for their customers while keeping the investment cost down. Um, another uh, competence centers highlighted uh, their network of what they call um, sat satellite farms across the country. So basically, those farms are set up as test beds for research and development to aid the improvement of productivity and efficiency within the sector. The data from the satellite farms is basically or centrally uh, stored in a cloud-based database 
And then this can be used for improving the technical solutions uh, and as well helping the R&D process. Some competence centers told us about a good practice also of, of providing a real life environment for testing and validating new products, concepts and processes uh, through what they called a co-creation space where a new product or a new process is developed from A to Z uh, with the involvement of the end users. And this co-creation space is equipped with tools and equipment such as prototyping equipment to carry out the innovation activities. So moving to the CC structure. Sorry. Um, the, uh, the first one is the um, service evaluation. So the CC environment encourages a continuous dialogue amongst the different groups within the center on provided services, target areas and stakeholders, technologies and methods, while listening to the needs of the customers and end users. This is very important for uh, competence centers. Um, two competence centers told us that they advocate for something they call a flat management structure, as opposed to the hierarchies found in traditional organization. So basically, every member of the team has a voice and a point of view that is respected and discussed. Um, and this contributes to the excitement that each member of the team feel when they collaborate with the customers and with other team members, and they reach a tangible impact in the dynamic field of uh, smart agriculture. Another CC advocate for an environment is more like a startup environment. They told us that they have a culture of freedom that is focused on helping each other, being supportive of the team members without compromising the industry needs. And this would allow for introduction of new services and technical solutions to the target customers quickly based on their needs. So these are some of the good practices that uh, uh, we have collected and we are already collecting others uh, that we are sharing with our competence center network members. Um, and we will uh, keep uh, doing this for the foreseeable future. And we hope that those are very valuable for our network members. Thank you very much.